Nicole Scott here from Mobile Geeks. I am at the ZF booth at CES 2019, and we're going to be talking about one of the major trends of the show, ride sharing. Robot taxis are kind of all over the place, and ZF was no exception. You guys actually showed an autonomous ride hailing system uh, over in the parking lot, and I got to take a ride and I stopped at a school and an airport, and it was actually really thrilling. So you can tell me a little bit about what you were showing to us. Yeah, we, what we have shown is our, our um, autonomous vehicle, our idea of ride hailing in the future, in future mobility, next generation mobility for inner urban cities, for example, and mobility, and I hope you enjoy the ride because it's m much more comfortable. You do not have to look for a parking area. You do not have to find your vehicle again. You just step in, take a comfortable ride, you will always be safe because we have all implemented our occupant safety systems and you just enjoy it. Well, and that's something that you, we, we, we were talking about earlier because we are in a people mover right now from Ego. And we were talking about this future of, of robot taxis and how there is no driver. And there's so many uh, implications of not having a driver that I hadn't really considered. You'd mentioned about having children in the back. Can you give me some of the examples? Because I, I, was, I was interested to learn. Yeah, so if you if we do not have a driver anymore in a, in a small bus in, in public transport, we need to cover a lot of scenarios. Um, we, we, we were just today covered by the driver, just to check what is the charging of the battery. Yeah? That's an easy thing. Diagnostic data we need to transfer to the back end. But just imagine you need to count how many people are in the bus, how many people are going in, how many people are going out, because you need to make sure you do not overload it. Or if, uh, if, if you only have one person and suddenly she collapses, what are you then doing? Yeah, you then, that's the reason why we have an interior observation system and we connect the vehicle to a backend. If such things happen, we can react. Or just imagine we have children who are fighting each other or something like that, and we, we have no driver anymore who can control them. This is where we need to take control by connectivity over the vehicle and make them clear that they should stop. I mean, that's the really interesting thing, is that though objects are autonomous, it means there's no driver, there's no people, they don't exist alone. They exist within a whole ecosystem that we still have to take responsibility for. No, no driver, no person doesn't mean that we're not accountable or not connected. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you will be connected yeah, any, <laughs> anyway to a, to a whole ecosystem. You, the, the autonomous vehicle, as long as we have mixed fleets, uh, need to work properly in a, in a mixed fleet area. So that means we have to uh, cover all possible accident scenarios so that the, the mover can react. Um, and then you do not want to make evasive maneuver resistance, something like that, even if all the, in, the people inside say, okay, that, that was Let's do it. It's, let's do it, <laughs> yeah? Why, do, why does he do that? Yeah? And, and we need to have a natural driving experience and what, what, is, what is also comfortable for the people. And, and I think that is important. The other thing that I was thinking is, I'm, I'm imagining a, a wonderful world where we don't have traffic. <laughs> and these, these types of share, autonomous ride sharing, this is a big step towards decreasing congestion on our roads. But the other step beyond that is removing parcels or delivery trucks from daytime delivery. And um, one of the reasons why we have so much daytime delivery is drivers don't want to drive at night. And also there's more accidents at night, just statistically. Mm -hmm. So like these, these types of things are kind of stopping or keeping traffic on our daytime roads. Can you talk about how cargo movers are going to change things? Yeah, so <clears throat> autonomous driving with people or cargo movers offers a lot of aspects of, of uh, of uh, advantages we do not see before. As you mentioned, um, we have a customer expectation of same day delivery of what you ordered. But when you are at home, probably at the, in the evening, no driver will come because they are already stopped working. So, you, but you, we can ensure with an autonomous people, a car remover, yeah, we can ensure that you get your delivery. And probably in the future we will see uh, mobility concepts in cities where you're not allowed to go into city for cargo delivery during the day. And so you have to do it by night. And then if you have to do it by night, you need to go with an electric drive line because you do not want to generate noise. You need to be quiet. There's a reason why the people mover or the cargo mover is an electric driven vehicle. And all these aspects we have put into this product. And, um, and I think that is a, is a big step forward 
And just imagine if you <coughs> if you order something, yeah, and we see already concepts arising in the U.S. Just look on Waymo and Walmart and so on. Yeah, so you have your 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 daily food delivery. Yeah? This can only be done if it's driven automatically because you will not find the drivers anymore who can do their job and which makes it affordable for you to get this comfort and this is where autonomous driving and autonomous people or cargo moving will be an enabler for a totally different world we are living in inner cities you know um, Daimler Trucks had an announcement this show about a partially autonomous um, semi-trailer I think it's the, the the Cascadia and I was listening to this news and I, and it, and I, I realized that the reason why this is so important is there's actually a driver shortage because we're all addicted to shopping online and the number of packages that we're receiving even today is causing a strain on our package delivery ecosystem I mean like the mail service was definitely something that we thought, oh no, we have email, it's going, it's going away. And then we all got addicted to online shopping and the mail service is back to being one of the most important lifelines for now the average consumer in business. And it's still a little bit far away, this, this, this future of replacing drivers with, with autonomous vehicles. We're, we're not quite there yet, even though I think we're all maybe logistically ready <laughs> to have this come and alleviate some of the pain points can you talk about like what what like what it's going to look like coming up to this point yes and I, <clears throat> so i think autonomous driving is the only way of closing the gap between an exponential growth of logistic demands driven by online shopping for example and the driver shortage and um, so our idea within cf is let me say a a um, a stepwise approach. So we have already presented our ideas for last mile delivery. If we connect this to big trucks, autonomous driving on highways, to have a hub to hub driving and delivery of the the goods with, with big trucks, mm -hmm. okay? Um, there we will close the gap with the driver shortage on the long distance. Um, and then if you have reached the next hub, then you need to have smaller vehicles electrically driven that you can go into the cities with a cargo mover for example in order to close the final mile or the last mile to deliver your your goods you cannot go probably you're also not allowed to go in the cities with a big truck anymore in the future so you need to have a cascaded concept and we have all um, all concepts available so you know CF has also a big um, a big advantage in the truck area and we can transfer all our t autonomous technologies also to that area mm -hmm. so we use all the synergies to close uh, the whole logistic uh, chain you need to close in order to fulfill your requirement because you do not want to wait in the future if you order something in online shopping you do not wait for the oh. for two or three days no, yeah? no, so I we want, need to close that I want it now when I hit buy yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah? If you, as soon as you have pushed the button, you buy it, your expectation will come, your, your perfect expectation is you will come within the next hours. And that is only possible with, uh, with autonomous driving because otherwise it will get be too expensive or you cannot do it because you will not find the drivers anymore. Mm. Now, one other thing for aut autonomous driving kind of comes to mind. At your tech day mid last year, you guys actually showed the craziest demo of a trailer unhooking and rehooking and driving around. Now this was like next level autonomy. <laughs> like like we we're getting used to the idea of, you know, trucks being on the road, but when you start to look at this real infrastructure delivery stuff, the place of autonomous driving almost seems just like magical in the way that it can kind of streamline things. <laughs> yeah, but but what we demonstrated in the automated freight yard is in our point of view not the um, in, in, in the late entry point, it's the earliest entry point. Why? Because you have a geofenced area. So uh, it's an it's a automated freight yard, so you, you do not have to fulfill all um, homologation efforts on public roads. And if you, if you look on, on that, um, for example, uh, changing the, the load, yeah, you have to maneuver with a truck, with a big truck, by accuracy of two to five centimeters, okay? But if you have untrained drivers, what would happen? 
you will have some damages. And if you can avoid these damages mm -hmm. yeah, by automatic driven um, uh, load changes, right. yeah, then you can have a win-win situation. First of all, you do not lose time in changing the freight. Mm -hmm. the second is you, you save a lot of money because you avoid the damages. And so you have a win-win situation and it's the first entry and earliest entry in autonomous uh, driving because you have a geofence area. So for us, that's this very early point of realization of, of our gears. Excellent. So we've actually covered a lot of things that aren't here actually at CES just because you guys have so many things in your portfolio when it comes to autonomous vehicles and ride sharing, sh autonomous ride sharing, though I think it's one of the hotter topics here at the show, is kind of pegging into that, that moment where our things do become autonomous and it's not just cars, it's not just freight liners, it's just it's kind of everything in the ecosystem around it to kind of do that last mile delivery. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, so if you look on, on, um, on ride hailing or ride sharing or mobility as a service, that's the main driver for autonomous driving. Because if you, if you uh, look on the business cases, if you look on the um, introduction scenarios and so on, yeah, if you can remove the driver, make a new concept of mobility, make a city car free in order to make more green areas or whatever, that's the main driver because you can see the immediate advantage and it, 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 it's also a, a, a viable business case. So it will come, yeah? will that's, come. that's the history. <laughs> well, it's not coming soon enough, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, are, we are doing our best to okay. develop as fast as possible. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for taking the time to join me. And check out more of what we've been up to here at CES 2018. I'm Nicole Scott from Mobile Geeks. <laughs>